Hey guys, Amy here. All right, I am going to give you a tour of the entire place and all of our plants. And it is the July update, so stay tuned. All right, guys, so I am doing this early in the morning. Well, actually not, well, it's early for me, but uh, it's like nine o'clock. It's already 94 degrees out, it's hot. But this is the July update. So what you're looking at here, these two in the front are our plantains. Um, they get very, very tall, but we planted them near the house because um, during the summertime, the sun beats on that window, so we're hoping they'll get tall enough. But in amongst this little banana square, we have are also um, some dwarf Cavendish, and some of um, <clears throat> excuse me, some of them have bloomed, and the bananas are not that great. <laughs> That's okay, we'll, we'll uh, take the bananas once they get plump before they turn yellow and we'll fry them up and we'll eat them still. Um, but, <clears throat> got the dwarf, we got a few dwarf Cavendish here still left. Um, we're weeding these out because we are replacing them with, look at that. Woo wee, all the way up there. These are the ice cream bananas. Um, we absolutely love these guys, and I'm going to try and get a better picture for you, better view of it. I mean, they're as tall as the freaking tree. Look at that. And they are healthy. Um, I have a feeling that, and I'll show you, I got, I'm going to get two more racks. See how nice and fat that bottom is? Nice and fat that bottom is. That's gonna be the bloom traveling up and you'll notice the tree will start getting fatter and fatter as it goes up. And then one leaf will be short before, uh, before the bloom comes out. So these have been here almost two years. Uh, three of them, this one, that one, that one. Now the ones next to it are the daughters and they're doing great. Um, but I got lots of pups. So more bananas coming. And I got the crows. And let's see, Donald planted some, I believe it's uh, turmeric or ginger. I'm not sure which one, but he, um, we had some extra, so I, I, I want to say it's ginger. It is definitely ginger. He planted a bunch around here. I got dragon fruit there. I got a dragon fruit here. And this is all near our house. And I'm also going to show you the ugly side of things. Because of the high heat and a lot of rain, a lot of things are not trimmed and look proper looking. So this is the ugly side of looking at things around here so let's get moving all right that's the back side and there's the the rack of bananas that's been sitting on our roof we have to get to that <laughs> but I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys everything that's going on today now what I mean by the ugly side is we got weeds we haven't been able to mow. things have been just off the last three weeks here so everything you're seeing all the weeds eventually we will be able to get to it it's just that we have to time it right but I call it the ugly side of homesteading because everybody likes to see everything all nice and pretty and trimmed and you know put away and we got a jungle this is Florida living <laughs> So this is our ever-bearing bush, doing great. We only got one or two berries off of it this year, and I have a funny feeling it's because of the, um, I don't think it's getting enough sun. The power company is supposed to be taking this tree out, which is just monstrous. 
and it's leaning towards my shed. So if this tree falls, literally, it will be falling on all this over here, which is our messy pile. I've already shown you the banana circle. Down here is one of our pineapples with the vine. And these are the Florida vines that just get everywhere, but it's not choking out the plant. I do have the hand weed. Here is one of uh, Donald's hibiscus in bloom. He loves hibiscus. And here is one of our first dragon fruits and it's doing awesome all the way. We're gonna leave this post here. We have more ice cream bananas. And I'm gonna come, this is the uh, back side of the deck. I'm gonna show you this side because it's a little bit easier. Got a pup here and they are doing awesome. Even the one that's behind my fire bush, I was worried because it wasn't getting enough sun, but now it's sprouted enough to where it will be above the bush. Um, this one here is another one of Donald's hi um, hibiscus. Here is my fire bush, and it looks like it's getting ready to bloom. Um, the uh, hummingbirds love this. I uh, got some more ice cream bananas. We're trying to make natural shade for the house. We're going to be putting a few more over here. And then this is the teeny tiny banana. And then that one's got a pup. And then here's another pineapple. This guy here, this one here is our beetle leaf. And lo and behold, lucky me. So if you all ever saw any of my loofah videos from last fall, you know I washed them all off on the deck. Well, one of them sprouted. So I literally have a loofah vine in here. I'm just gonna let it go. Oh, it's getting ready to flower right there. Um, I'm gonna try and keep it off of the plants as best as possible, but it is what it is. And then this is our little garden, <laughs> overrun by other things. Little aloe plant there. Um, got a uh, another dragon fruit, another ginger. This is cilantro. That's oregano. These got, I mean, this here is a hazelnut tree. I got another hazelnut tree. I'm gonna try and get in here. I just gotta watch for snakes. We have a papaya, doing great. There is the other banana plant that bloomed, and it's just a sad. Oh, he hasn't cut that bloom off. Okay, so for those that don't know what a bloom looks like, we gotta cut that off. I'll probably have to do that later. But yeah, there's another sad rack of bananas there. Um, and then there's another one here. Wow, this guy really needs to take it off. Let's see if we can find it. There it is. <laughs> These did not bloom as good as I thought. Down here, my shampoo ginger from Wormy Queen came up. So I'm very, very happy with that. Looks like, I think I got some more ginger there. Um, more ginger, more ginger, another banana, and I'll step back and I'll show you the bigger guys. G looks like Donald went crazy with the ginger. Ginger, that's turmeric over there. These guys are empty. That's lemon balm. That actually worked this year. I haven't been able to do that. It's always been a little pot. Then this is my, I know I'm in the sun, I'm gonna try and do it at an angle. That is my mulberry tree. My moringa, which is looking awesome. I gotta have to cut that down and then let it regrow. And then on the backside is our passion fruit vine going. And then we come over here, we start over here. You guys are gonna love this. 
Donald and I found this thing. It is called a dinner plate hibiscus. The thing is as big, it's about 10 inches round. So it's about, that's why they call it a dinner plate. Isn't it gorgeous? And then when the flower will droop, it'll fall off and then it will leave that little seed pod. <clears throat> And look, and then here's some more about to bloom. This one's about to bloom. So, and this one up here. It's just a really pretty plant. And this thing comes back year after year. We planted it here thinking, okay, well, you know, it, 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 it'll be there and then we'll just get the seeds. Well, we never got the seeds off of it the first couple of times. But every year it just comes back. So we leave a stake so we don't forget that it's there. We got cassava back there. This is the Mona Lisa banana. This is our first year growing that. Um, uh, this is technically year one. I got to get my jasmine. This is my jasmine vine. Um, I got to get that under control once I'm able to get in there. We got more pineapples. This is... I don't know. Dang it. Donald doesn't have the tags. I'll have to place it in there once I figure it out. Um, this is the Little Prince. More Dwarf Cavendish. We've planted along the ditch line. This is the... Uh, fig. This is the brown turkey fig. We were able to find another one and we have mint growing in with it More pine. Oh look at the size of that pineapple guys Oh Almost almost ready. Oh, I can't wait. This is a willow tree. This is another thing that's coming out by the power company It's called a Caroline willow um, Banana this is LSU um, Fig. I don't know if it's named after the college, which is gonna be Louisiana State University. Um, I'm a Seminole fan, so for those that are Roll Tide and, and LSU, I'm sorry, it's just the name. <laughs> Mexican Sunflower that finally came up. More bananas, this is weeds. See how aggressive they grow. Here is Donald's curry leaf, and it's blooming. And look at all the little bees. And we pick from this often. This is doing great. Pineapple, banana. Um, I think this is another mulberry, I think, maybe. I know we picked up another mulberry somewhere. Pineapple, banana. This is my river birch, doing great. Pineapple. This is a persimmons. Um, I'm sure if I'm wrong, Donald will edit this and tell me what it is. A wild uh, sweet potato vine. Um, pineapple, that's a sugar apple they're growing and then this is the Florida home grape and we do have grapes I'm gonna see if I can get to them here they are so y'all can see the grapes coming in it's a mix between a regular grape and the muscadine um, we forgot to trim it trim it up this year uh, during the winter time you're supposed to trim back some of the branches so that way it can grow again well we neglected to do that so we're just gonna let it grow wild as crazy as it can get this year and then we'll trim it back once it's uh, done producing another um, Mexican sunflower here is my bay leaf now one thing I will ask for some advice on for you guys is my Bailey tree has done wonderful, but this past season, even though we are getting new growth, 
as you can tell, right there. A lot of the tree itself has got these spots, brown spots all over it. I have no idea what it is. Um, I think it's some type of maybe a bug biting it or something. It's lost a few leaves, but all in all, it's not too bad. So if anybody's got any advice on the bay leaf and you know what this stuff is. Note it below in the comments. All right, then over here, we have our Barbados cherry. Um, it's hanging on. The heat is really taking a toll on a lot of our plants with it being in the 100s. This is a Pam grape. Um, this is the first year it's actually doing something, so we were kind of worried about it. There's cassava, tea tree. That is a prickly pear, but I have a funny feeling the heat got to it because this is a, it's spineless. This is one you can eat and cook up. Um, that's another grapevine, but the muscadine grape that we took out has come back with a vengeance this year don't know why I haven't seen any blooms and then here is our blueberry patch we got extra blueberry trees from our friends uh, daughter of a ghost town on Instagram <clears throat> this one came back we had this one already we added this one we added that one and then that one was ours this one's starting to come back um, these two are not So we're going to just leave them there and see how they fare later on. Uh, looks like we lost a little quad to the heat. That one is got a burnt top. Here is another one of our low quads. Over here is our, I think it's called sugar loaf. Um, pineapple, these are the ones from Hawaii, so they are sensitive to the cold. And then, lo and behold, check this out, guys. This is my pigeon pea. This was the one we originally had here, and it came back this year. Uh, half of it is still growing. The other half has been producing. <laughs> kind of weird. There is another grape one here, but the tags worn off. I have no idea. This is my red crepe myrtle, which is struggling. That's near the front of our property. Now I'm going to come over here, get to the really ugly side of things. I have more moringa, and these are new bananas. I can't remember the names. We've gotten so many of them, <clears throat> different types. It's insane. Um, that is uh, St. John's wort. That's come back. This is a mess. That is lemongrass. This is a loquat. Let me try and get out of the sun a little bit. Loquat. Here is our. Whew, sounds intense. Our wonderful papaya tree. This is the one that tastes like coffee. And it's branched off. We got like four limbs, which is awesome because we just cut it at the top part. Um, wild purple uh, sweet potatoes. And over here, this is the greenhouse. I'm gonna try and walk backwards. Here is the sour sap or sour sop. It's doing great. There is. Oh, the heat got to that. This is my uh, Japanese red maple tree. It's not native at all for this area, but I keep trying to save it. This year I put it in a pot, but 
Looks like the heat's done a number on it. Here is our mangoes. They're all doing great. We got three mango trees. Here is one of the gorgeous cassavas. I gotta watch out for snakes in this tall grass. So that is gonna be awesome to harvest. That is a snapdragon. Here was the gift I got from Donald, but the weeds have covered it up. Uh, it's a, um, it's kind of like a fire bush, but it grows in a big bushy area. All right, this is our strawberry tree, which is doing great. We have banana. Here is the, one of the uh, Mexican sunflowers that I planted as grown up awesome. It came back! Look, guys! This is Donald's voodoo plant. It's in the same relative as the... Um, that big... Uh, that big flower that smells like a dead person. I cannot remember the name of it. I'm so sorry, but that's the best way I can describe it. Um, we did have some potted stuff in here. And as you can tell, this... It, it, the weeds are just coming up everywhere. This is all weeds. This is all weeds. That was, I don't even know anymore. These are all dragon fruits in here. Here's some more strawberry trees that survived. We got um, pots filled with potatoes growing for sweet potatoes. Look at that, ain't that pretty? I love how the how the mangoes start out with the little red leaves. We have not yet, we have not gotten mangoes as of yet. Um, oh, those passion fruit vines died. These here are tree orchids. Looks like they're not faring well. Um, I was able, this was our, see look at all the weeds, I can't even get to the bin. Um, I was able to get all the radishes out of here. The weeds have taken over, but we still got garlic in here. Here is more of the Mexican sunflower. This bed was empty. It's full of weeds. I just have to be careful because uh, we do have snakes here. This is all jumbo peanut. This is from our friends over at um, Esson's Family Garden, AKA Sapper Gardener, Get, sent us seeds. And look at them all. And then I ended up having Mexican sunflowers pop up in here. I'm gonna try and get back here. We have not done any type of maintenance. Mexican sunflowers. There is my red crepe myrtles. Absolutely love these guys. Look how beautiful that is. And then our sad corn. Our corn, as you can tell, it got us almost as tall as me. I'm five foot two. And even the beans, the, the, uh, crop that we grew in between was Kentucky Kentucky pole beans just trying to um, do complementary growing mm -mm. It, it just this the high heat just beat the crap out of this did not do well at all so eventually we're gonna clear this out <clears throat> this is my pink crepe myrtle tell it's been blooming for a while and then over here let me start here these were the strawberries they are now got runners on them so we're gonna be able to transplant them into another bed I did have um, eggplant oh dang one survived this is my eggplant Look at that, it survived the heat. 
Eggplant, yes. And then this is my kale. Um, it's trying. The heat really beat the crap out of everything. And then over here, we have a raised bed, but the sweet potatoes have gone crazy. I mean, look, sweet potatoes. In with my cranberry hibiscus. These are cranberry hibiscus. There's a strawberry tree again. I just made a full circle. And then there's random stuff growing back there, like that's more cranberry hibiscus. But I also got, this is Everglades tomato. <laughs> growing in within. Um, looks like the, the cranberry hibiscus in here, underneath the uh, strawberry tree is growing way better. This is producing. So I will be getting um, strawberry uh, berries off of it. And we're gonna go in here. This was the old flock pen. In here, this was mowed before the heat came. This is all strawberry, or I mean, I'm sorry. All these vines, these vines here are the purple sweet potatoes. And then I got a bunch of stuff growing in between. The cotton is struggling. That's one of my cotton ones. Uh, I still have seeds, but there's the cotton plant. It's struggling. It's it's the weeds. Um, let me step over this. I'm just walking, looking for snakes. These are red sorrels. So they're getting taller than the than the um, the weeds now, so I don't have to worry about mowing over them. But they are in tires. Eventually, once I mow, I'll show you guys. And then here's all back there is either Everglades tomatoes, which are growing along the fence line here, as you can tell. We got a couple of the uh, banana plants that are surviving. But everything else, this is all sweet potatoes in here. I'm probably going to have a sweet potato growing party because I am not going to be able to harvest all these sweet potatoes this coming fall. We're going to have way too many. And then as you can tell, I got more ice cream banana plants doing really, really well along with the cranberry hibiscus. All right. Let me walk around to the other side. Well, just as I was leaving, just got some thunder. It's about 10 o'clock in the morning, so storms are coming, as you can tell. So I'm gonna have to make, I'm gonna, might have to hustle with this, but we only have a little bit more to go. <clears throat> I know this is gonna be a big video, but I wanted to show you guys everything in one shot. So I had planted my Butterfly pea here, so that way it can grow up on the fence. So far, it's struggling, but that is the only survivor. I might try planting some more. Then over here, here's the sweet sick garden, guys. Um, the beans are overrunning my tomatoes, so gotta deal with that but these are the Asian yard long green beans and I'm just gonna walk around and show you guys I have to harvest but the way the storms coming in fast the winds picked up big time so I was able to mow the mound so the weeds aren't so bad here but I mean we got weeds coming in here it's still here this is a yellow garden spider uh, she's been hanging out here I've had to harvest around her and she's moved around a couple of different times so but as you could tell inside are my tomatoes these are the blueberry tomatoes they're really good I've gotten several um, pickings from them but 
a, a mistake we made. We thought it was going to be a good idea to have um, the beans grow with the tomatoes because the tomatoes need some protection from the sun like this. Obviously, you can see the vines haven't grown in the back, so this entire plant has struggled with the heat. Well, they're actually killing my tomatoes, so we're just going to have to figure out something next year. Um, I'm thinking where the corn was, we could uh, have the tomatoes grow there, that way they have some support. But, as you can tell, the green beans, no problems. Tomatoes, problems, even in there. Um, now, for those that don't know, yard long green beans. They'll get long. These are long and skinny. They're not ready yet. I wait until they're the thickness of a number two pencil before I get them or take them off. Like this one here. This one, I would pick. It's about the thickness of a number two pencil and anything up to this size, these two sizes. Now this one, you can eat. This one, if you leave it on the vine and let it brown, you can harvest the seeds and grow it next year. But this one, see how squishy that is? You don't want to eat that, it does not taste great. But you could save the seeds and it's really easy for the seeds to be saved. This one, nice and hard, no squishy. That's how you can tell they're still good. So even the bigger ones, like some of these, like this one, even though it's big, it's a little bit squishy, I could still eat this, no problems. So this is the swing set garden. And then over here, we got some more bananas. I'm trying to grow some along this line here to give our animals more shady spots, even though they do have this nice big oak tree. But the way we're facing, that's in the afternoon, the sun is burning all in this direction. So everything over here gets hot. So I'm trying to uh, keep it to where we can get them more shade. And then this is the last part. This is our what we call zone three. We have more bananas. This is our avocado tree. Uh, and as you can tell, we put down cardboard trying to suppress the weeds. And this is the heavy duty cardboard. These are like the moving boxes that you would, you know, pick up from stores. And uh, the vines have just, we put it down two weeks ago and the vines just came right through them. That sugar cane there, we got more sugar cane there and that sugar cane and that sugar cane. We got cassava. We'll have, uh, we got more of the sweet potato vines. That is my lemon tree, which I'm just uh, kind of disgusted in a way because we just haven't been able to get out here. Here's my lime. And look, I got a lime. I do have a lime. Put the lime in the coconut. Um, but it's being, it's being, you know, drawn out by the, uh, the vines here. We got more cassava, uh, more banana trees in the back. There's a low quad. Here's the prickly pear. Um, this is the kind you can eat. It's spineless. Doesn't have any thorns on it. It just looks like it does. Strawberry tree. That's our olive tree. More cassava growing. That, I don't remember. That's a mango. Um, let me get out of the woods here. Oh. This is going to be a, crepe, a pink crepe myrtle our neighbor across the street gave us. This is a pawpaw. Snapdragon. Um, not sure, I can't remember. 
Got another mango there. Uh, no clue. <laughs> another mango. Now I'm trying to hurry. And then um, here is our pineapple and papaya patch. And again, we got another pineapple. This came back from the winter, doing really, really great. Oh, and we got some blooms on here. Yay, these papayas are gonna be producing. I got a flower right there. And then I see little tiny nubbins on this one. That is our banana circle. That was one that we we're trying out. In the center, we put a lot of like leaf debris. So it's something that we were just trying to uh, see if that would work for us in our area. And then lastly, but not least, this is our original banana patch. Um, these guys don't get a lot of sun um, in the afternoon. Um, there is a prickly pear right there. This is another type of pawpaw. And then all of these little bananas. I think these are the dwarf. This is when we first started getting them. And then this is our original ice cream banana trees. Well, they're the daughters of the original. Um, but we're leaving this patch here because it does provide, it's in a really good location. They seem to like it. And then uh, we got another rack. Ready to harvest here soon. And then lastly, I have over here, something I don't really show that often because I keep forgetting about it. Uh, besides the cranberry hibiscus, I have these. Um, Velvet broadleaf plant. Um, the shimmering is the velvet. It's, it's got this soft velvet uh, feel to it. And then these are the flowers. Now, once they come out, they are purple. Tiny little purple flowers. Very, very pretty. And then lastly is my blue hydrenias. I have been adding acidic to their um to the soil because they started out blue and they went to pink i don't want pink i love the color blue the blue hydrangeas are awesome um i do watch uh jason over at cog hill farms and he has inspired me to make a blue hydrangea patch under this tree but the tree is being taken out now so I'm gonna wait until um, I can find something else but they prefer the shade um, so I'm not sure how these guys are going to take when this tree comes out because the afternoon Sun is all over here that's the high intensity so I may have to either recess it back into here or um, find a new location for them but all in all, guys, that is our complete tour around our house of everything that's growing. And unfortunately, between the heat and the rain, the yard is just overrun again. It, it's, it never ends. It, it, in Florida, the weeds, unless you can suppress them somehow, they will completely and utterly overrun everything. It's a constant battle and it's tiring at times, so. But I hope you guys enjoyed this garden tour and remember, grow something for your family.